welcome. Thank you, God, for our beautiful day that we get to spend in your presence together. Thank you for tuning in. The Lord, he is God, creator God, and he is going to touch your life. If you are seeking God, this is the message for you and me, that we are literally going for our God. We're calling out to him. And he said, whenever you seek him and you're hungry for him, for his righteousness, that you will be filled. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. If you seek him with all of your heart. And that is what we're doing. So Lord God, almighty creator of heaven and earth, we seek you. Please show yourself strong for us. As you have called me to speak today, you have called those to listen today, those whom you have called, and he will touch you. He will come in your room and he will meet you as you cry out to him. And that's the truth. You know, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he introduced himself by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to be born into the world as a baby and to live as we live. And he's a son of man. He knows exactly how to, how you feel. And he can help you, guaranteed. You see, he is the only one who can help you when you're drowning. He's the only one. And sometimes it looks like things are, are really bleak and you don't know where to turn. You can't break free from things and you feel a great desire to be free and to be standing on your own two feet and, and looking to the one who can help you. Amen. And Jesus Christ is that one that can help you. And he has come to your rescue. If you are looking for him in spirit and truth, he is there to be found of you today. And I'm going to tell you some stories from the Bible. And those stories, beloved, are going to encourage your heart that you might know by a fact that you are loved and that he has come to find you wherever you are. He really is. He sent me here to speak to you to find him. That you in your own room and in your own heart will find him. Excuse me. Lord, thank you. Thank you for overcoming everything, every obstacle in our way with your holy power. Lord, you healed the crowds. You had compassion on them. And those people who are watching are looking for you. They're not looking for religion, and they're not looking to hate. They're not looking for anything but to see you, oh God. And if that's the case, oh God, meet them where they are in the holy name of Jesus Christ. And I know he will, because he asked me to come on to say to you, I love you, and I will meet you. I know exactly where you are today. And I am looking to come into your boat and help you. And this why that's why I'm going to read you a story. This is a story of Jesus. And in, it's in Matthew 14, verse 22. This is after John the Baptist was murdered by haters, by those who were doing the wrong thing and wanted to be justified in what they were doing. You're not supposed to take your brother's wife according to um, the, the, the law of God. You are not supposed to do that. But he did. Her Herod was doing that. And his wife was real, real mad that somebody had the audacity to correct her. <laughs> Amen. And so she said when her daughter was dancing for her husband, which is creepazoid, you know, and he was so enthralled with her dancing that he said, I'll give you anything you want. And so her mom said, ask for the head of John the Baptist. There's so much creep creepiness there on, that we can clearly see. So the daughter said, okay, ma. So she 
went to Herod in front of everyone and said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And he gave it to her. Yike, right? That's yikes, right? <laughs> Amen. So why? I don't know. Like, why did the enemy get to kill John the Baptist, who was God's servant? And Jesus said, among all the prophets, John the Baptist is the greatest. Um, and then he described the king. Now, after he, he died and was resurrected, now that's the kingdom of God kind of prophets. That we're um, able to understand, like Paul and John and, and Peter, who lived in this realization of Christ Jesus because he had come and showed us who God is. And if you want to know who God is, you will find him through Jesus Christ alone. And that is the only way to get to God. And you can, you know, think whatever you want today and you can worship whatever you want or, or think there's no God. But the reality is that every single person will acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. And bow before him. In the in the end, the Bible is clear, and that will happen. So he is inviting us to do that now that we might get to know God and walk with him. Why would he let John the Baptist be murdered? He is creator God and he is almighty God. Well, I don't know, but he does, and that's enough for me. But when Jesus heard about it. He withdrew himself there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away and they, because they need to buy food. And Jesus said, they need not to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have only five loaves and two fish. Bring them here. And the Lord multiplied them, and they did eat. Amen. And the Lord gave them all food. So the Lord's having a special day in his ministry. He's extremely sad about his cousin, John the Baptist, who is murdered. Right? And he knows, he, he knows um, what caused that way more than I know today. And he also knows that that enemy is gunning for him too. But he's never afraid of the devil any more than we are with Christ in us. Because there's nothing that the enemy can do to stop God in you. And that's the wonderful news of the gospel of Christ. That we stand still and strong and tall. And we don't have anything to worry about when Christ is in us. And the same Christ is showing us who he is through his Bible, through the Bible. It is a wonderful idea to read the, through the Gospels to understand who is this Lord. He's not a religion. He's usually not the one who's preached about in general. Um, and mankind's religion about him from the beginning, even Paul you know, in the beginning, he, he raised up churches that all left him for their own, um, for their own. You know, there were just a few with him after he had worked so hard to plant churches. There were just a few with him because other ones came and said, hey, I could, same thing the devil said, I could take this for myself and I could be the big one with the big suit and everybody would like shake my hand on the way out and I'm the big guy, you know. And that kind of a thing is not how the Lord is. And so sometimes he is misrepresented. All right. Now, sometimes, and sometimes his people represent him in positions of leadership and honor him. You know, it's all individual heart by heart. And so Jesus leaves that crowd after he fed them and it helps us understand who he is and what he's like by how he acted so he told the disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side i'll be there in a little bit i need to be alone for a little while if you ever felt like that i need to be alone for a little while i'm i'm struggling with something 
And I just need to be with my father. I felt like that a lot in my life. And there are times when I become extremely angry or upset. I'm sure he was upset about John the Baptist being murdered like that. And so he needed to be with his father. And I'm going to tell you something about walking with God. When you know him, you can be pretty upset about stuff, just like everybody can be at times. And when you get upset about things, you can't really fix your feelings about it. You know what I mean? And so you're either scared or mad or however you feel. And then you go to your quiet time with your father, with God, and he will speak exactly what you need to hear in his word to you, from his heart to your heart, in a song of worship. And he will speak exactly what you need to hear. He does that for me every single day. I would say about a thousand times a day. Because I will go to him if I'm having a rough season. I'll go to him with my problem. And then he will speak to me, comfort me, be with me. He's very aware of us. He's very mindful of you in all the struggles that you face. And Father was mindful of Jesus. And Jesus needed to go be away from him. And he made the disciples go away too. Get in the boat, go to the other side. Sometimes we just need to be all alone with Father. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was a long way from the land between the wave, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. You know, and so his disciples are, are in this boat. Now he called them and got them in the boat. Did God put you in your ministry? Did he put you in your life? Well, storms come, yeah. They do. And you could logically, with a humanistic type mind, say, well, if the storm is coming, then that must not be God because he asked me to do this. So why would people rise up and hate me? Why would you could, I mean, why would the storm come into your life? You, you might ask if you are serving God and you're walking with him, you say, why? Why would the storm come? But it's best not to question God, but just humble ourselves before him and ask for help when that happens. Because it did happen to the disciples. And it will happen to you and I. We're going to have to face the battle. And that's just the way it is. If you want to overcome. He said, to those who overcome, I will grant you to sit with me on my throne. As I overcame and sat with my father on his throne. Now to overcome, you need something to overcome. That's the only, that's the definition of overcoming. Coming up against an obstacle and going up over it and not being stopped by it. Well, that's part of your ministry and life in the Lord. And that's okay. We accept that because we trust him no matter what comes against us. We don't let that push us back. But they were afraid because they're out in the middle of the sea and they could drown if their boat capsizes. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind and he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Excuse me. And then um, they crossed over. They came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent all around to all that region and brought him all who were sick. And implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made 
Then the scribes and Pharisees came to Jesus from Jerusalem and say, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elder? Why do you preach and you're a girl? Why do you not do it the way we think you should do it? And you have this mockery of God where enemies come up and, and know better what you should do than God knows. They were telling God that his disciples were doing the wrong thing. <laughs> right. Right. Amen. It happens today. <laughs> it really does. People think they know what you should be doing. They think they figured you out and they have got you pegged for whatever they, they want to exalt themselves over you. Beloved, Jesus dealt with it. He dealt with wind. He dealt with waves. He dealt with haters, judgers, condemners. But none of those withstood the reality of who he was. Even to the point of his death, he knew who he was. They, they took it all the way to crucify him. Those people who were saying, your disciples are doing the wrong thing. When God calls you and people rise up and say, you're doing the wrong thing. That's not for them to say. It's between you and God. Amen. And so you have to know that and be willing to face the difficulty and the hatred and the ridiculous judgment. So, because that's ridiculous. Your disciples are doing this and that and your disciples are eating without washing, you know. Because <laughs> they had their mind what Jesus and his disciples should do. They were that arrogant that they knew what Jesus and his disciples should do better than he did. And that arrogance brought them all the way to murdering God. Jesus Christ, amen. And God said, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And he still says that today for anybody who's ludicrous enough to tell God how his servant should act and what his servant should do. Nobody's my master but the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you serve him with all your heart, nobody's your master but the Lord Jesus Christ. And so they are trespassing who decide to, that they know what you should do or not do, right? They trespass. So just like in the case of Jesus, when they trespassed to the point of trying to kill him, or kill him, they did kill him. He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And he will have mercy. He will have mercy on any who will humble yourself and repent. And he will have mercy on your enemies as you forgive them. Because it's kind of silly if someone tells you what you should be doing like they are your master, like they know what you should or shouldn't be doing. And only God knows that. And he is your only judge. Amen. So you can stand up and you can walk with God in all that you are in every day that you live. Amen. And trust him. So let's ask for his help with that. Lord, excuse me. Lord, please help us walk with you. Help us find you. Thank you so much. And now we're in Psalm 147. And I believe that this will comfort your soul, servants of God. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. Amen. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That's what he was doing. This is a song of, um, of from the Old Testament, you know, and he was doing that. Jesus, he did exactly that. He walked through the crowds and he healed them. And he, I'm sure, you know, his disciples said if everything he did was written, there, the whole world wouldn't contain the books. I'm sure he looked in the eyes of everyone he walked by. And he comforted their hearts. He healed their hearts. He saw sheep with no shepherd. And so he, I know longingly, reached his heart out to the sheep in any way that he could. And he does that still today. Amen. Amen. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So let's go to him for that. Are you broken? Do you have sad places in your heart? Thank you, God. Thank you for your healing. 
Only you can heal us. We come to you for healing. They said only if we could touch the hem of your garment, we would be healed. Everyone watching has something they need help with. May we touch the hem of your garment. May you be with us and heal us and show us your everlasting love this day and all days. In the name of Jesus Christ, we seek you and we'll find him. Thank you for watching. God bless.